Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, just to show you what I've been doing over the weekend. I, um, uh, you know, all those flowers I've been cutting out with the napkins. Um, I cut a bunch of those out. Mod podged them on the bottom and on the top. And put this on the other side. And I was going to put this in a book. And I thought, well, it would look really good on the cover of my book. And um, these are like Tim Holtz. I'm not sure that if they're Tim Holtz, but it's kind of like that. And here's some more uh, ephemera that I bought in a little package. You know, here was my two birds. And this one here, uh, moth come out of, um, I believe, Flower Magazine. But I, you know, uh, my foamy brush had a little bit of this paint left over, but I went over it, you know, with the glue. So it kind of knocked down the, the darkness of the wings. And like I said, I took the flowers. And, you know, this was one whole row, so it was cut off there at the bottom, straight across. But after I put it all on, I uh, took a marker, a thin marker, maybe one of the microns, maybe a number eight, and went around uh, the flower. And even... You know, I cut around the flower this way, but, like, I didn't cut in the flower here because it would have been highly impossible even with a Zacto knife. So, even though I didn't cut in here with a Zacto knife, all the blank um, spots I still went over. Say, like, there's still napkin here, but it looks to be blank and it looks to be, like, the background. So, I just went ahead and went around with the uh, Micron pen. And that probably would have looked better even on the front. But, um, you know, this here, I don't know what y'all can see the color, but it, um, I just used vanilla. Um, I think it's a little bit of coral, vanilla, and white. Mixed them all together. And I even painted over my strap, which I usually don't do, but, you know, I usually try to be careful, and I said, well, heck, might as well go ahead and make the strap look like the same color. Okay. And then, I was looking at someone else on Pinterest, and uh, I had did one of these. I had a whole um, thing here uh, some time ago. I happened to be at Ross or, yeah, maybe Ross. And I bought a whole bunch of these, which I thought they were acrylic because I have bought acrylic before, but it turns out they were gouache. So I thought, you know, instead of going out and buying more paints, I thought I would go ahead and use them and... Um, I've been adding water to them. I really don't know if that's the plan to add water to them or what have you, but I've seen several people do that. And since I do like watercolor effect, that's what I've been doing. So I took three colors. I took like a green, the purple, and a, a red. I don't even know if they have a oh, rose mauve and pale green but even though it says pale green they kind of look all the same to me the pale green looks to have more yellow in it maybe but anyway um i had went around uh just took it added a little bit of water not much it made like the green circles the red and the purple and um, then I took I had some um, 
Let me grab them Sharpies. I'm trying to get everything together over here. Sharpies that I've had for a while. You know, the bronze, gold, um, silver. I believe this is just a gray. And so when I was seeing people, you know, with the Dina Wakely, uh, what was they, like shimmer, uh, not crayons, but the, the scribble sticks, which I don't have, I thought I would use this. But at first it looked really ugly. And, I, you know, it was like a dark green, dark red. And, you know, I just kept putting circles. And I said, hmm, that looks too much like Christmas. But, like I've always said in anything I've ever done, that someone had really changed my mind once they said they never gave up. It's going to look ugly in the beginning, but never give up. Just keep adding and that has really changed my outlook on art altogether because I always said, hmm, that's ugly. That don't look too good. Well, you know, let's fix it. So that's what I did. And um, so then the other day I was going to show you all this flower that I had gotten out of uh, the flower magazine. Which you might find that funny, but... Uh, I don't even see a whole bunch of flowers in the flower magazine. But then I, you know, was thinking back to, I remember someone was putting really dark, colorful backgrounds, not like this one, but like deep hue color, and putting like black and white flowers on top of it. So then that gave me an idea. I knew, I might get too off track here, but I knew that I had this book that I've gotten a long time ago when I got that other um, multicultural book. And this one's not dirty. This is all the scribbling I did, and I've actually took a knife and everything I was cutting out, I cut it out on top of this book because I knew it was probably going to be trash before long. So anyway, um, so I was going back through this book trying to look for black and white images and here's my camera again glaring so i wanted to find black and white images because um that's what they were using but it wasn't like black and white like i, I could reproduce for a flower so anyway i cut all the ones that had design So this one had a big building in it. This is another one with design. Here's a big tree. I mean, I don't have to tell anybody it's a big tree, but that one had design on it. Another good one with design. Another good black and white building and so forth. So I just want to let you know where I got these images. And this one here, if I get to it, if I get to it, it was another man sitting here, so I added it to one of my pages over here in my Dina Wakely book, if I get back to it. Okay, so then I found these images. Like, here's a building... Let me see if I can find this white piece of paper here. So this was one of the skyscrapers. And I don't know if you all can see it. And it was green and white over here on the edge. And here's some of the buildings with the uh, windows. But what I did was, uh, you know, cut the image out and laminated it. Which, you know, on this side it was cut off, so I improvised and just made my own leaves over on this side. So then, uh, so when I put it down, 
um, when I go to put it down, what you're going to do, let's see if I can grab my thick marker here. Let me grab another page. I don't want to grab the, the same one that I've been working on. That would be a huge mistake. So. See if I can't bring my light back over this way. So I improvised on that little corner right there. And... To make it fit I had I couldn't turn it that way because then you know here's my perforated edge right here so I turned it this way a little bit and put it over here as far as possible I'm showing you all this. I know this part is easy, but the other part may not be so easy. But at first, I had just used half of it. And stuck it on a page, and I'll show you that here in a minute. And I've yet to, to actually do the page that um, the lady had shown. Plus, uh, I believe she, she did several. I think she was selling them as prints. Okay, so. So that's that. So then, you know, once I did that, like I said, I cut out one one side, I cut out half because that's what I had to begin with until I figured it out. Hey, I could have just turned it around and made the whole flower, but uh, the pages I'm putting them on in my Dina Wakely book, see if I can just pull this part out in my Dina Wakely book, you know, you don't want to just throw a whole big flower on a page because it's going to cover the whole page up but on the flip note i'm not going to cut out half because i may want more than half or i may want to put it up here in a corner which then i'd have to cut it this way and then i'd have some little pieces to use on other pages so that's why i didn't just make halves and so Okay, so anyway, I thought about using this one, which this was one of the trees on another page. I thought about using it here. Which, you know, the, the oak leaves on the tree already have texture, but I'm adding more texture. It's like even another dimension. So then, I found this, which was a, a tapestry in that book. And I might can show you guys a little bit on this one. And then I did this one. Too much glare again. Well, here's the tapestry one, in case it was glare. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but it was like a blueprint in the bottom. And I did it uh, a different way than I did this one. And I'll have to show you that when I go to draw it. And I took that page that I don't know if you can recall the one I had the uh, pocket on here, which I was sliding the, the tags into. 
you can see it was the, it was the Dina Wakely that had the birds. And there's the other side with the washi tape. And this actually is the, the paper thin one. But that was the whole idea behind it was, you know, to have background already going on when you put this down. And I had one more somewhere under here, maybe. Um, okay, so I had done one of those faces the other day. You remember I said we were putting the piece of paper over the phone. Well, I had free-handed this one. And I wasn't in love with it because it was too big. It wasn't going to fit on my page. And I thought, what else can I do with it? But I did love the eyes. So when I go to cut it out, then you won't see all this. But, you know, that was one way of, um, you know, like Dina Wakely says, if you don't like your image, you can always cut it down to size and, and uh, make something else out of it. Okay, and I was going to try, oh, here's my other one that I did on um, another sheet. This one with no background. I was just going to show you guys right quick. And here goes nothing on how I did it. So, you know, you probably thought, okay, that was going to be easy because, you know, she's just going to trace it, but then. You still got to draw all this inside. You still got to draw all this inside. Okay, so. Let's see if I can find my number 12, and I hope it doesn't give out on me. If it does, I'll have to go with this in uh, Posca, but anyway, okay, so what I was doing is going on the tips of all of these, and just coming down in an arc, so then the next one, I wasn't worried about I was going to be covering up another leaf, And I just kept going around from all these pointy things. And if you think too many lines are getting too close, then start on this one and not that one and go this way and that way. Okay, hang with me here a minute because then I've got to show you how I've done the leaves and whatnot. And I guess you always want to turn it around because uh, you're kind of going to be eyeballing it from this point to here. Say like if it was a straight shot. And that way you won't get slightly offhand. You won't be doing them like this. And, you know, you won't be getting them all sideways. So here again, here's my middle. Bring it down to here. Don't be too worried if you're overlapping. But I'm even thinking, you know, of course, you all aren't going to have this same image, but, you know, you can always download one or, you know, find any flower out of a magazine. It doesn't have to be this one, and it doesn't have to be this big either. You might not want this big a uh, flower image. Okay, so then once I got that, I think I was 
actually using the 12, but it's about to run out to fill in these little gaps around here. So just wherever you seem, um, right here where it's a little pointy thing, go ahead and color that in. You don't see one and you want yours to be bigger. But I just went around and filled all the ones in first and then re-looked at it and say, hey, I, I do like how that looks. I don't like how that looks. Don't worry about being so doggone careful right here. I mean, you, you do, but you don't. Okay. So then, I took my Micron number 12 again. And like, okay, I'm filling in this, this leaf here. Even though it has these two spaces right here. So I would fill in a leaf and a space. And I'd go like this, really close together. But don't, don't do this. Don't, we're not drawing lines. I don't want them perfectly spaced. I'm actually doing this. Coming down here to where I started, but don't don't think that when you get way up here that that one's got to come down here. No, it don't. I'm just kind of feeding off the one before it to get that effect. Okay, so I'm staying inside this uh, part here and this overlap. And you know, depending on how... Okay, so then, so I'm going to fill that in. Uh, and, you know, if you want your spaces to be a little more filled in, go back and put a line right there. But then you're going to come over here to this one. We're going to fill in one of these and one of these. And I'm going to go this way, the opposite way. If you think you got off track, just fill it in with another little line. Just like fudge it in there. And really, it's kind of, you know, if you... Reminds me of a feather. That's how a feather looks. You're always filling in one of these and a gap. See, I was getting too perfect, too spacey right there. And then, you know, someone had some really dark background like the Dina Wakeley's I had been making and and then put one of these flowers on it. I think I'm supposed to went up here. And you know, you don't have to put lines. If you want to put circles in all these, put circles in all these. But it was the fact I was trying to mimic what the girl did on Pinterest. And then for this down here, I just drew a bunch of circles all over in each one of these. Kept going around and going around until I filled it all in. Just little circles. And then getting back to... Um, okay, so that's pretty much this one. Okay. Okay. But to get that effect, I went back 
and I don't matter if I used a POSC or not, but I filled in, after I did all this, this whole flower, I went and filled in all these little gaps. And you can fill them all in. You can skip one however you want yours to look. And do that method. But if you want to find an image, you know, like I said, that this one here was tapestry. And, you know, I knew that I couldn't mimic this uh, print look. That all mine was going to look like I had just drawn it. So... That wasn't really the way I wanted it to look, but something to that effect. And let's see if I can even see this line. Yeah. Like I said, you can draw over any image. Say, like, if you have a bad, a little bad uh, color, um, what am I, watercolor is what I'm trying to say. Got tongue tied. You know, a little bad watercolor and just do this over top of it. Which, that's what I've been doing this morning also, painting some of these pages up. Let me put you back up here. And just, this was with the gouache. And I was getting it really runny and letting it run down the page. And, you know, I was pouring it on the page. And maybe with green, you know, just about as wet as you can get it and letting, letting it float. And then I had one uh, of my... Uh, you know, I was letting it drip back into this pan, which you can still see there's some in here. I was letting it drip back into here, and this was the blue and the green, and then I had the red. So, uh, I think this was the last one I did because it was about, you know, my, uh, what I was dumping on here. You know, I would let that one drip onto that one. And here's one I got put all together. And, and I wasn't even trying to draw a face, but that's what that looks like, a Tina Wakely face. But what I was doing is I was flicking, uh, you know, the brush was so um, watery, I was just flicking it on here like she does. And it kind of made a face like she draws. You know, and that's on the other side of that one. But, you know, I may go over this with a flower, and I may not, but I had intentionally made these as pages, and I was going to glue two of them back to back. And so forth. Okay. And that was that. And I want to show you all... Uh, something else. Might have to fast forward this part because, you know, I'm going to flip through again and um, try to find what I have done over the weekend. So, but I was going to show you all something else in here when I, when I pass it. But anyway... Uh, getting back to the tissue thing, I had an idea that, let me grab my tissue paper, and I don't know why I didn't think of this the other day, but I thought I had a piece cut the other day, but... But 
you know, this book here is full of those faces. But, you know, you could draw out this one. And let's see how that goes. And, and I don't try to try to just be just really. I don't try to just okay. I got to go around this circle really perfectly. I don't try to do that. Don't even try to do that because it will not come out looking like hers. And then I noticed on some of her eyes, she would draw the pupil like a Pac-Man and like that would be her pupil. So, well, mm -mm -mm. okay, for like the eye and the mouth, top lip. Bottom lip. I think, uh, well, I don't even know if I want to draw that side of the face because the other day when I was watching my own video back, I was thinking, hmm, I shouldn't have even drew the, even drew the, um, other side of the face in. Got my face a little bit off. That's all the better, though. I think it's even got some more bushy eyebrows up here. But then there's one more face in here I want to show you all. Well, I had that one, but here's something else I did. I did two of these because I thought I like how that, getting back to that flower image, the black and white, how it, you know, pops against this. And I think the lady did have a really dark background. And this was one of the, it's like a, you know, here's one of the, um, shapes that was in the uh, Chicago magazine, I mean book, and you know it had this here around it, so I put one over here, so let me get to my other image, and I was thinking that, you know, getting back to this one, if y'all aren't you know, loving those white images. Well, it's, it's showing it a little bit bigger here, but if y'all aren't loving those big images, you know, then trace these out. I don't think that was how it was supposed to went. Sort of trace it out loosely, not line for line like you're not like first grade would be tracing out. So let me find my other face image in here and here's another building I had cut out that I thought might either look good here that I'm gonna have to cut part of it off but I thought for you know just more interest I don't think it was that one but you could also do that one 
I don't remember if I showed you all this when I stuck a tag right there to give that a pop of color. I tagged there. I, I sewed it onto the page. But I thought pick any of these. You know, you can even pick that image. I thought I had a better one. You can use that one. This is the one I was telling you about. So, you know, those of you who want that image on tissue paper, just score top of it with, you know, with the tissue paper. But you can even go one step further if you get that laminator. <laughs> Because I thought about that too. Go ahead and laminate this. Cut it out with a Zacto knife. Then you got your stencil. To use for days. To use for days. But I thought out of looking at all of them. That was the best big one. And here's the little one. I haven't altered. Uh, other than I painted the hair pink. I think that's all I did and add, added the bird. You can even, you know, you want to put it on this. This is just black card stock, but run it through the laminator or either run that through the laminator. Or if you all have uh, the, the sheet already that you bought, run that through the, the laminator. And, and then cut it out with Zacto knife. But I thought that was a really good tip that it will help us all. Because I'm not a good Dina Wakely drawer. I would have to draw, you know, I don't know, 50 faces before I got comfortable to where, you know, we, we can all scribble it just like she does. Okay, guys, so I hope that was some good tips, and uh, hope you'll subscribe, and hope you'll hit that like button, and as always, see you